In the previous video, we designed this custom sealed subwoofer enclosure for an upcoming build, but now we need to go through the process of designing the beauty panels to trim out this trunk. Would you believe that there are actually 40 hidden fasteners that will completely hold all of this together? How did I use 3D modeling to determine exactly where to locate each of them and how did I use it to come up with this design? That process is coming on up, but first a quick thank you to our show sponsor, Crutchfield. Crutchfield sells car audio and home audio gear. And if you're a big planner like me, you know that there are many times that a certain spec or dimension might not be readily available on a product listing webpage. What's great about Crutchfield is is they have over 150 advisors on staff at their Virginia-based call center ready to assist you over the phone or even via chat. With tons of experience and zero sales pressure, they have always been awesome at helping me find the detailed information that I need. Better yet, they've been super cool and hooked up our community with a special offer that you can take advantage of if you check out the links down in the video description. Let's head on over to the computer. All right, guys, so to start the design process, I first needed to come up with an idea for the shape that I wanted to have on this enclosure. If you watched the previous video, you saw where I made this printout here where I just took a head on view of just the enclosure itself, printed this out, and this allowed me to create a quick sketch for my shape. Now, I would definitely suggest to you guys when you're coming up with your initial shape, don't stress too much about thinking about all of the details on how everything's going to come together. Instead, just focus on the shape that you want to create. So here's the general shape that I came up with. You can see I added a note here that we want to add a stretch hex pattern on the inside. But essentially here we have kind of these swooping arches on each side along with some aggressive styling down in the corners here that kind of matches the look of this particular vehicle that we're designing for. And then up at the top middle, I was originally thinking maybe a logo area, but I decided against that. Instead, we just have this little bit of dip in geometry to add some additional shape. So let's go through the design process here. And you guys know that I like to show you the finished product first because I think that helps you have a better idea of what we are working towards. So here you can see our overall shape along with this hex pattern on the inside. Everything is going to flush over the subwoofers themselves, which I should show really quick. So you're actually not going to see any mounting hardware on the subwoofers. You're only going to see the surrounds of the subwoofers themselves. And we of course have some panels that flush out to the sides of the trunk. Let's go through the process of designing this. So in the previous video, this is where we left off. We have our enclosure designed, our sealed enclosure for the 212s. We have the amplifier rack on the back side there. If I turn off our scan you can see how I have that on some standoffs to allow for wiring to go back behind it and to make everything nice and clean so the first thing we need to do here is I always like to add standoffs to the front face of the enclosure to allow our beauty panel to mount to I'm going to turn off the scan data from here on out just to kind of clean things up for you guys. We'll turn it back on when it's needed. But you can see on my first initial sketch here, I'm just drawing in where I want some of these standoffs to be. And of course, it's nice that I have the decals in here for the subwoofers themselves. That way I can see the clearance that I have in relation to the subwoofer. Since these have that tab ear design, there's not going to be any interference in this location right here where I'm adding the standoff and the same for the bottom here as well. For the design of the standoffs, each one is about one inch wide, which will give us plenty of room to add some sort of threaded insert. And you can see the different dimensions here. One I initially had go the full width of the enclosure. This one up top is 16 inches wide. And then these two on each side are about nine inches tall. So with that sketch made, I extruded each of these standoffs. And if we take a quick measurement from the face of our enclosure there to the face of the standoff, this is going to be a one inch distance. This distance is important because it needs to allow clearance for the actual subwoofers themselves. Right here, I don't have the subwoofers modeled at their actual thickness. So I had to do some real world measurements of the subwoofers to make sure that I was going to have proper clearance behind this face, which is going to mate up with the front of our beauty panel and the subwoofers themselves. Now I mentioned in the intro of this video that this enclosure has around 40 different fasteners tying everything together. And I really like using CAD or 3D modeling to plan out fastener locations. That way you are sure that you're not gonna have any interference issues as you go through assembly. So in this next sketch here, what I'm doing is I'm actually locating each of these different hole locations. And what was nice is as I went through this design process, I actually ended 
ended up modifying the locations of each of these holes quite frequently to get everything lined up where I wanted it to be. That's the beauty of a parametric modeling program. I can get 30 steps down the process from here and then I can always come back to this step and update a dimension if need be. An example of this where I came back later in the design process is I actually did some little extrude modifications to these side standoffs here to give myself more material in order to mount those side plates that we're gonna see here shortly. We're going to see the addition of those holes too in a second here, but also based off that previous sketch that I made with all of the hole layouts, I also made the geometry for this first initial beauty board that is going to sit over the top of the subs. So as we step forward through our design history here, you can see I've added two different hole features. The first hole feature adds all of these holes to that outer beauty board. And if we hide the beauty board, the other design feature I added adds all of these holes, which are going to be for threaded inserts that are going to thread and be permanently mounted into each of the standoffs. When I say threaded inserts, I'm referring to this style of insert, which I've properly sized each of these holes for. Now, usually in the design process, I like to come up with the initial shape of everything before I go back and add any details like roundovers or chamfers. But in this case, I just wanted to get a feel for how this cutout area was going to look around the subwoofers. So I did add a quick chamfer that you can see around each cutout hole there. That's just a 45 degree chamfer into the wood. So our next sketch that we created here is what I called the base shape. And this is where the fun really starts to come together as I create this unique geometry that goes around the subwoofers, but also hides some of the different mounting hole locations. And this is what's really unique about this design. Look at this insert here, this shape that I have highlighted, that's going to hide one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different fasteners. And it's going to be press fit in, but it's going to hide all those fasteners that allow this assembly to be bolted onto the box. You'll notice that there's a few hole locations that fall outside of where that trim ring is. So like down in the corners here, and then these three up top, we'll be talking more about that shortly. I do wanna point out really quick, if you see all of these symbols along this center line here, that is a symmetrical constraint. And what I did when I originally designed this is I actually only drew half of the design because I knew that I wanted it to be mirrored over to the other side. So rather than making things needlessly complex, trying to design both sides with a bunch of dimensions and potentially having issues if I forget to update one dimension on one side and make it the same as the other, rather than worrying about that, I just design one side of everything and then mirror it all over. Something else you'll notice is that this outer shape I have highlighted here also extends over the ear right here that I have highlighted of that standoff, and that's going to allow us to hide some more fasteners that you guys are gonna see in a second. So again, anytime we finish a sketch, usually the next feature is going to be creating some sort of geometry from that sketch, so in this case, I used one of the inner sketches there to make our trim ring, and then I also extruded this outer shape, the outer ring, as well. Notice that in this case, I'm not worried about adding any of the chamfers or cosmetic information quite yet. I just wanna to continue to build out this shape, and that's because the next shape that we are adding is the sketch for these side covers. Now in this case, this is where it was important and critical to bring in my scan data, and that's because obviously I want the side of these pieces to perfectly match up with the side of the trunk. I was able to do this by creating a section analysis, which I just turned on, which cuts off part of the scan data, and it only limits it to this plane that I've made here. And I was able to drop in this spline that perfectly matches up to that scan data on each side. We're gonna have a real nice flush trimmed panel. And you can also notice that I added where this part comes up up top here. If we turn off our section view, that's designed so that it can come up and match with the top of our outer ring. So I'll turn off that scan data. And again, anytime we have a sketch, it's usually followed by some sort of extrusion created geometry. In this case, that extrusion is those two side covers. And I forgot to mention this previously. So I made these pieces here, the two trim rings. These are three quarters inch 
thick, and that's in order to give myself plenty of meat to mount some threaded inserts that we're going to be using later in the process, along with being able to have a nice deep draw on some of the chamfers that we're going to add to some of these different pieces to give ourselves a nice geometric look. Now at this point here, I want to kind of explain my theory on how everything is going to mount together. So first of all, this trim ring is going to hide several different fasteners, and that trim ring will be held in simply with a press fit style design. That's because we know that this piece here is going to be wrapped in carpet and we know the trim ring is going to be wrapped in vinyl and what I can do is precisely control the gap dimension between these two pieces when I go to manufacture these which will give me a nice press fit. I actually designed and came up with a unique tool that allows us to precisely determine what that gap needs to be in order to get a nice tight press fit. If you guys want to learn more about that process, check out the related video. I'll be showing that gap later in the process here too, so stay tuned in for that. But what I realized here is I have that trim ring that press fits in, and I know that I'm gonna have all these fasteners that are going to actually hold this board to the standoffs, but I needed a way to hold this piece on somehow because this piece hides some of the mounting hardware we're gonna see in a second that hold these on. So in order to hold this piece on, I want to actually make it one piece with this. So these two pieces here are going to be an assembly that bolts in, so I wanted to bolt this in somehow from the backside. So in order to do that, I started adding this sketch here, which I call the whole flange sketch. And let's just go ahead and extrude this one because it's nothing too complicated. It's just a little bit of a flange, which will allow me to add some holes that you guys are going to see later on. And again, that's because this piece here, the beauty board and the outer ring, those are going to be mounted as a sub assembly, which will then bolt in with everything together. So I added that tab ear there, and I also wanted to add some additional mounting down in this location here for that through hole you can see. And I realized that if I did that, my initial standoff was going to be in the way of that hole there coming through from the backside and landing into this piece. So if you watch for the quick change here, you'll notice that in my design history, as I go forward, I was able to remove that area on each side just with a simple push-pull. So I had the sketch that made this top geometry, and now I just added these three simple holes, which are going to allow me to bolt through from the back side. And if you watch these corners here, here, and here as I step through my design, information you'll notice that i just added some small little roundovers that's just because i intend to ultimately cut this piece out using a cnc machine and i didn't want to have a hard corner here you always want to radius some of the corners because the cnc router bit can't actually get in and make a sharp corner it can make a sharp outside corner but not a sharp inside corner so while i was thinking about it in the design process i just wanted to add that little bit of information now you'll notice that up until now i have not added any of those extra holes on the standoffs that allow the side plates to mount on so the next sketch I added defined those and as we step through the design history there you're going to see those get added and if I turn on the side covers here I also had to add the holes that may up with that and you'll notice that these holes are slightly smaller in diameter if I hide this you can see the hole behind it is larger, and again, that's because I've actually sized these holes in the CAD program to be sized based on how I want them to be in real life. I want this to be a smaller through hole that's going to allow a 1024 bolt to go through and have proper clearance, and I want this backside hole to be larger. This is sized appropriately depending on what we need for our threaded insert, which in this case is a drill bit size of 5 16ths of an inch. Now, here's another really fun step for you guys. If you remember on my little drawing here, my little sketch, I noted on there that I wanted to have a stretch hex pattern on the inside. Side. So let's unveil this here, the hex pattern. I plan on adding this using the Mobile Solutions Matrix router tool, which allows us to do this by hand with a handheld router. And this is definitely a little bit more of an advanced thing to model. I'm gonna hide everything so you guys can kind of see here. 
but I started this process with creating a sketch, just like you do for most things in 3D modeling. And I basically just designed this sketch here on one side. And the reason I only needed to do it once is I'm able to pattern it both up and down. And then you can see I have a mirror line here that I was able to reflect all of the features over. Now, obviously it's cool to be able to see this pattern for visual purposes, for cosmetic purposes, but the other big advantage that I like for doing this, for actually modeling this, is you can make sure that it doesn't interfere with any of your mounting hole locations. As an example, imagine if this hole lined up, you know, halfway through one of these cuts, it would just lead to kind of a weird mounting situation. You could throw a washer on the fastener if you needed to, but ideally none of the holes lined up and hit that spot. You'll see that this hole does line up and hit this spot, but it's actually not a big deal in this case because remember, in this case here, we have the fastener coming from the back side, so it's going to be on this nice flat surface. It won't matter that it is going partially through that machined area. Now, if you remember earlier, I had mentioned that I wanted to add a gap between these two pieces, and as of right now, so far in our design, these pieces are machined size on size. That means that they would match up perfectly when they are cut, but once we go to wrap this piece with vinyl and wrap this piece with carpet, these pieces are no longer going to go together at all because those materials take up a thickness. So instead, what I'm going to do is I brought in this sketch and did some projections. Doing a projection means that you bring in some of the existing geometry into this particular sketch. And then what I did, if I open the sketch here, you can see I did a small little offset. In this case, when I measured my materials, I needed an eighth inch offset to account for that vinyl and that carpet material. And once I do that sketch and I do my next feature, which is a cut feature in this case, now you can see that nice perfect gap that we're going to have around everything for the material. So now at this point in the project, things are starting to come together and look pretty sweet but we want to start adding some more of our detailed look to really get this dialed in. So first watch this edge here along with the top. I know that I wanted to add a chamfer. And again, a nice thing about doing 3D design is you can get a feel for how different chamfers or roundovers are actually going to look without cutting any real material. As an example, in this case, I originally tried a 45 degree chamfer and I didn't really like it. It wasn't as large as I wanted it to be. So instead I switched to a 30 degree chamfer, which gives me a little bit more bite into the material there. And ultimately I liked the look of that much better. We know that we also want to add a chamfer to this inside perimeter on our inner trim ring. So let's see how that looks. If we add a 45 degree chamfer all around the inside there. Next, if we watch the outer edges of our side piece, Pieces. I wanted to add a small round over. This is really small, just a sixteenth of an inch. Once it's wrapped under carpet, that will just give those pieces a little bit more of a finished look. And again, on these side pieces, since I want to cut some of this on the CNC machine, I noticed that I had some hard corners here that I wanted to eliminate before I export any of this information. So you can see I've added those in there. And again, if we look at the back side of our assembly here, I need some holes on the back side of this ring here to match up with where this inside part is in order to allow for the threaded inserts to be mounted. So if we hide all of those and then we do this hole feature, you can see the five holes that I have added for the threaded inserts. So from here in my assembly, it was a matter of actually adding all of these threaded inserts into the model. So this piece here is going to have five threaded inserts in it. Then we can show the beauty board here we need this beauty board to be mounted to those threaded inserts so let's unhide our five fasteners these are 1024 inch long fasteners and again what I really love about 3d modeling is we can get things like the length of the fastener completely dialed in I could see that it's not going to be so long that it presses into the material and it's not going to be so short that it doesn't reach into our threaded insert an inch long is going to be perfect based on the thicknesses of material that we've designed for. So we've shown how these two pieces are already bolted together. Now, if we just temporarily hide these, let's add our threaded inserts into the standoffs. We got all of those added. So now if we turn these two pieces back on so we can see them, we of course need our actual fasteners that mount that whole assembly in. And I kind of did this process a little bit out of order. We would actually be mounting the side pieces first, 
So let's hide all of this inside stuff. We've got the threaded inserts and the standoffs on each side. We can turn on the side pieces and then we can show the fasteners that hold those in place, which again, we can verify that they have the proper length to land nicely within those threaded inserts. So here we have it guys, our finished design. And I know what a lot of you might be thinking out there, man, that seems awfully time consuming, but I have to tell you guys, I think it's really advantageous to do all of the design on the computer initially, and here's why. I cannot tell you guys how many times I've been going through a custom build and I just find myself sitting there overthinking things like, is each of these holes going to line up perfectly? Am I going to have an interference issue? These are all things that we can easily test as we're going through the 3D modeling process. When I make these videos where I'm just stepping through all of the design details, you guys aren't seeing the multiple times that I did something like this where I went and opened up an initial sketch and modified, you know, I think originally I started with like inch and a half standoffs and it ended up being too big. So I reduced each of them to one inch wide. There's many different features like that that I found myself modifying as I went through the design process, but I was able to modify them easily without having to actually modify any real world materials. Also being able to do things like this, turning on a section analysis and being able to literally do a cross section where you cut through the material and you can see hey, there's no interferences, all these holes are lining up perfectly like I intend them to be. Even the process of thinking about, you know, how these different components are going to mount together before they are mounted into the enclosure, it's all advantageous and I think that it's going to save me quite a bit of time when it comes to actually building this enclosure. I'm gonna be using analog tools to create much of the enclosure itself since it is relatively simple and I'll be using CNC machinery to create the beauty panels that we designed now that we have all of the CAD data. Question of the episode for you guys, in this video I went through a pretty brief and quick explanation of everything, but in the future would you like to see a much more detailed and in-depth longer format video, I mean, we're talking like hours long. Is that something that you'd be interested in for the design of this type of build? Let me know what you guys think. And don't forget next time you are picking out car audio, home audio, or other electronic gear, be sure to check out our show sponsor, Crutchfield. You guys can get a special offer and save at the links down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Jerry and the Patreon membership team. And of course, thank you as well for tuning in and watching.